Chapter 3 Guidance Books. I've read several on the subject. Daylight. I could never see the sun before, and it was fair to say I still hadn't. But the power of its light filtered down through the thick, angry cloud cover, turned a sickling color, yet still brighter and warmer than the humming lights of Stable 2. The air itself looked somehow wrong in the light, off color, but everything was illuminated. I could see motes of dust and ash floating around the room. I wondered how healthy it was to be breathing it, and for the first time I really grasped the expanse of the outside. It made me want to hide under a window. While working up the nerve to step into the very, very big outdoors, I preoccupied myself with opening the locked chest that I had discovered the night before. It took two of my bobby pins, but it was worth it. Inside was the most beautiful dress I had ever seen. Such lines, such folds of fabric, and the colors, elegant and regal. Yet the fabric was light, breezy, and did not sag. It was a dream. Sadly, a dream for another, taller pony. Joy and disappointment mixed in equal measure. But, even if I could not wear it, at least not without some major tailoring, it was the prettiest and most cheerful thing I had seen since leaving Stable 2. Carefully folding it up, I slipped it into my saddlebags. Mindful of the sniper pony the night before, I stood back, behind the cover of an overturned table, and used my magic to open the door. A tarnished bell, hanging above, twinkled carefully. Muted sunlight poured in, and the sounds of the outside overflowed the room. The twitter of birds, the faraway sloshing of the river, fresher air pushed back the stale. Cautiously, I moved into the doorway and looked about. Post-apocalyptic Ponyville was a rotting skeleton of a once homey little town. Between collapsed buildings and burned houses, the streets were littered with rubble and refuse. And everywhere, garnished paints of depravity and grotesquity. The graffiti was not limited to outside, and the raiders had defecated the carousel boutique with an almost ascetic fever. I turned from the doorway, my gaze following the lines of profanity that curled up the walls towards the rafters, and shrank back, choking in revulsion at what the sunlight revealed to me. Dozens of dead cats and dissected had been hung from the ceiling like decorations. I had slept directly beneath three of them. I took an involuntary step back, one hind hoof out the door. Beep. What was that? Beep. I turned and spied a half-buried orange disc in the ground just outside the door. A little red light on it was pulpit, pulsating. Beep. 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 Close the door! The voice came out of nowhere, tiny and mechanical, but somehow full of urgency. My heart lurched, and I jumped back inside, slamming the door hard. The explosion just outside the door tore it off its frame, hurling it and me back into the room. I crashed through a tattered vanity divider, the smoking door landing over me. Ugh. I was more shocked than hurt while I slowly dragged myself out from underneath the door. My ears were ringing. A trap? No wonder the raider ponies hadn't invaded while I'd slept. They had left a present instead. Hurry! There are more on the way! I could barely make out the voice. My ears felt like they were stuffed with cotton candy. Who are you? I queried, but moved to throw my canteen over my neck while magically dragging out the combat shotgun. 
I had been dismayed to learn that I had only one shot left. But if a raider pony stepped through that door, I intended to make it count. An entirely different voice replied, Come out, come out, whoever you are. The raider pony, the head raider pony, slid into the doorway, grinning maniacally with something in her teeth. It looked like a metal apple, and she tossed her head and flew it into the room at me. But the stem stayed behind in her teeth. A memory flashed through my mind. I, as a younger pony, trotting into the stable schoolroom, when an older pony stepped out of a doorway and heaved a water balloon at me. It had burst against my horn, soaking me and my homework. Hey, don't look so sad, blank flanks. I was trying to help you. You know, in case your cutie mark was supposed to be a target. The older pony had laughed and hurried off to class, leaving me dripping and miserable in the hall. Lesson learned. When some pony throws something at you, don't let it hit you. Don't even let it hit near you, because it might splash. The combat shotguns clattered to the floor as I focused my magic on the metal apple, catching it and hurling it back at the door. The grenade barely cleared the door frame when it exploded. Dust and splinters of wood flew at me, getting in my eyes. The tingling erupted at my feet, and looking down, blinking at the debris from my eyes, I saw the little bell from the door had landed, mangled at my hooves. My eyes hurt, and I kept blinking them. Cautiously, I lifted the combat shotgun again, and edged towards the door. I could barely see the forelegs of the raider pony around the edge of the doorframe, completely still. With a second thought, I levitated the table so that it formed a barricade over the lower half of the doorway, and crawled up behind it. Quickly popping my head up, I looked to see if the raider pony was still conscious. The leg wasn't attached to the rest of the pony. It took me a moment to spot the rest of her torn body, mercifully dead, and I dropped back behind the cover, feeling a strangeness pass over me. I had just killed some pony. Sneaking out of Ponyville had been harrowing. I realized early that I had been neglecting my eyes forward sparkle, and once I had even brought up my EFS, it was far easier to determine where the rated ponies were, and how to avoid them. Despite act actively looking for me, the rated ponies proved less than adept hunters. Using my magic to bang a mailbox lid down the street, or break an empty bottle against a freestanding chimney several yards away, proved significant to distract them to get past. I had almost made past the last house when the sniper pony started taking shots at me again. The closest shot grazed my flank, a slash of burning pain and flowing blood. Fortunately, the wound looked far worse than it was, and even my meager medical skills were enough to stop the bleeding and bandage it. I crouched in the little gully, sheltered by trees, and fought to catch my breath. Somewhere in the distance, I heard music playing again. The rumble from my stomach was much louder, reminding me that I hadn't eaten in almost a day. I floated out one of my apples from my saddlebags, and I uncorked one of my canteens. Of course, I had no more than taken a sip from my pit buck threw a dancing red light into my EFS compass. Not coming from the town, but from up ahead, deeper into the hilly woods. Of course, something else was coming to get me, because the wasteland clearly hated me. I recorked the canteen and stood up, wincing at the flare of heat in my wounded flank, and I lifted the combat shotgun. Still with its single shot, and perked my ears to listen. My surroundings were quiet. Even the music had gone. When I started to make out a faint buzzing, I lifted the gun to eye level and focused on the top of the barrel, lining it up with warning mark of red on my EFS. 
At first, I saw nothing. But then I spotted it. An ugly little flying creature, bloated and grotesque, hovering between the trees. It had spotted me too. A shot, a spiny, and shot a spiny dart through the air at me. It missed me, mostly, getting tangled in my mane. I aimed, but hesitated. The damn thing was so small, and could jerk around so erratically, that I almost had no chance of hitting it, and I didn't dare waste my only shot. So I did the next best thing. I dodged behind a tree and prepared to gallop. Another mark appeared on my EFS, followed by a zorching, crackling sound, quite unlike anything I had heard before. The red light winked out, leaving only the new one, which my pit buck had divined as friendly. I'm really sorry about what happened back in Ponyville, but that raider didn't give you any choice. She would have killed you. It was that mechanical, tiny voice that had shouted out the warning that surely saved my life earlier. With a mixture of relief and bewilderment, I watched the sprite bot fly up to my hiding place. Who are you? What are you? Was the question I wanted to escape my muzzle, but I suspected it would be rude. A friend. I raised an eyebrow. Okay, a passing acquaintance, but one does not mean you any harm. After a pregnant pause, call me Watcher. I regained the sprite regarded the sprite bot critically. Watcher. Okay. I slipped out from behind a tree and started looking to where my apple had rolled to when I dropped it. Not far away, near where the flying creature had been, and I spotted a glowing pile of ash, pink ash. You do that? Blood sprites. That's what you get when you mix Paris sprites with taint. Can't stand them, myself. Glad to help. Finding my apple, I levitated it up. Thank you. And thank you for the warning about that thing in the ground. Mine. I blinked. Y you want my apple? The Sprite Bot laughed, which was very weird to hear since the artificial voice didn't have any inflection. No, that's what it was called. The explosive in the ground. It's called a mine. It triggers when you step close. Oh. I took a bite of the apple. That's a very stupid name for a weapon. The Sprite Bot laughed again. It was a little unnerving. Then, strangely, I found myself chuckling as well. I really thought you meant my apple is yours. I'd share it if you wanted. Although... I don't know what you'd do with it since you can't eat. Huh? For having no emotion in his voice, the Sprite Bot did a good job at conveying confusion. You don't eat food because you're a robot and you don't have a mouth. A third time with the laughter, although it was getting more of a slight chuckle. Oh, you mean the Sprite Bot? Well, at least I wasn't the only one in the conversation had managed to confuse. Although, I was more confused now than ever. The sprite bot wasn't... isn't actually me. I'm somewhere else. I just learned how to hack these things to communicate and look around. I was beginning to get the picture. Then, that music. Oh, gosh, no. I turned that crap off the moment I hacked into one of these. I have no idea how old music gets into it. As an afterthought, the hacker in the sprite bot added, yet. I finished my apple, and my stomach felt much better now, as did my spirits, thanks to finally having a civilized, if utterly bizarre, conversation. Oh, time's almost up. Look, there are a few things you're going to need if you want to survive out here. 
a weapon, or at least a lot more ammo than the one you have. Armored bear barding, a bit of guidance, and most importantly, you need to make some friends. Armor, at least, shouldn't be too hard. Although I shuddered hard at the thought of putting on a dead pony's barding. Still, that gazing, grazing shot, it'd been outside less than a day already, and I've come terrifyingly close to death. I could probably slip back around to the bridge and strip it off the corpses there. A weapon? I had the idea of stripping armor from the dead it made me cringe, and the idea of possibly killing again stopped my heart. And friends. I'd had no luck with that foal in the stable. As a foal in the stable. What chance did I have in a world where saving a pony from raiders and slavery didn't get you a friendship welcome mat? If this is what I needed to do to survive, I wasn't sure I was up to the task. What do you mean by guidance? The bobbing sprite bot was silent a moment. I'm going to take a shot in the dark here, and guess you like books, am I right? Well, yes, I... There's a great book for people traveling through the equestrian wasteland. I'm pretty sure there's a copy in the Ponyville library. Just give me a second, and I'll send the tag to it, to your pip buck. My eyes widened in alarm. The Ponyville library? Even the place I just barely escaped from? The town full of sick, psycho ponies? Are you trying to get me killed? Look, you gotta trust somebody. The memory of Montreary Jack surfaced in my mind. Why should I trust you? I've never met you. You're hiding behind a robot radio. Oh, I don't know. How about me saving your life part? If I was trying to kill you, why would I have done that? The voice, Watcher, had a point. Before I could say anything to that effect, however, the sprite bot burped static and began playing music again. The music featured multiple harmonics and trombones. It flew lazily away, as if it didn't care that I was there. The Ponyville Library was in a tree. Not a treehouse, but literally, inside a tree. A massive, gnarled tree, bigger than most buildings, had been grown in the middle of town. Clearly to protect... Clear the project of magic. And hollowed out to be the public library. The south side of the tree was scorched, black, and dead. But, there were still a few leaves clinging to life on the opposite branches. The tree was surrounded by a wide open space with absolutely no cover. I hope my luck at the Carousel Boutique won't hold out here it was dashing. When I looked up to the highest balcony and finally spotted the sniper pony, an earth pony armed with a powerful looking rifle. The rifle was attached to the balcony railing with her guiding swivel mount following the raider and allowing it to aim what she could see. The only safe approach was from directly behind her, where the door to the balcony and the narrow top of the tree beyond her line of sight. There were surely more raider ponies inside. Sneaking up carefully from the only direction that wouldn't mean instant death, I was trembling with nerves by the time I reached the door. As swiftly and silently as I could, I stepped out of Ponyville and straight into Pony Hell. Pony corpses were everywhere, not like the bridge where ponies had fallen in battle. These ponies had been mutilated, desecrated, and put on display. Some poor pony's body hung from the ceiling, head and hooves severed and flesh sliced open and pulled back to reveal the meat and bones inside. Heads and limbs hung from chains like sick party decorations. The rotting body of a pink pony with a velvet mane was mounted.
spread eagled over a bookcase with railroad spikes. Two had been driven into her eyes. On another wall, a torso had been skinned and sliced open, and the pony's entrails pulled out to decorate the shelves like streamers. Blood and gore were everywhere, driven from the ceiling and painting the walls in equal parts with the graffiti that had somehow gotten even more mocking and cruel. Between the bookcases, pre-war posters were mounted in shattered frames. Some raider pony had painted over one of them, reading his magic, with a crude but effective description of a mega spell detonation. Another, the most beautiful pony, have beautiful minds, was covered by a painting that was simply pornographic. The books had been burned in piles, and the floor was layered in ash and filth. The stench was unbearable. The room was dominated by three cages, two large square ones and a smaller one, hanging from the ceiling, which was barely big enough for a pony. Captives, filthy, beaten, and misused, were curled up inside, their hooves tied together with stained ropes. The two in the nearest cage looked at me pitifully, and my heart rushed with pain. My eyes kept going wider until I had to clench them shut and bite my own hoof to keep from screaming. I backed against the door, heaving, unable to breathe properly, not wanting to breathe this air at all. The horror of the room flooded over me, drowning me. I pulled my hoof away, barely fast enough to avoid vomiting my apple all over myself. The stench of it, mixed with the reek of the room, assaulted me further. Please, a whisper from one of the ponies, terrified to raise her voice. Help us. This was beyond horror. I pressed my eyes tighter and tighter, and then opened them as a wave of brutal determination cut through my sickness. Please, help. That was no voice, disembodied and trapped in the eternal loop, coming from some radio signal floating in the air. These were living ponies. They were right here in front of me, and they needed help. And I was damned if these rotten raiders were going to make them beg again. The screwdriver and bobby pin slipped out, and immediately I began working on the nearest lock. With a click, the metal cage door swung open, and inside, two ponies bound and lying on their own filth. I realized uncomfortably they had nothing but the ropes with them, and that I had nothing to cut the ropes with. I tried to untie them with my magic, and the first pony's eyes were so wet with blood that I couldn't pull them apart. Oops. The second ponies were bound too tightly. Our are you for real? The first pony stood, shakily. I, I'm free? I nodded, then glanced to the other ponies. I had no idea how I'd reach the one in the hanging cage. If you could help me with... The pony blanched and shook her mane. Oh no, I can't stay here any longer. But here, take these supplies. I managed to squirrel them away. The pony dug into the floor muck with her hoof, revealing the utterly pathetic pile of scraps lying on a dirty rag that amounted to her entire worldly possessions. A can of diced carrots, a pre-war single-serve cake, and a handful of bottle caps, and it broke my heart. No, you keep it. You'll need it more. I paused, my eye catching a single shotgun shell in the pile. Actually, I'll take the shell. Thanks. I magically opened the shotgun and slid it into place. Now, I had two. The pony blanched up. 
The pony had already folded up the rag, and I picked it up in her teeth and slinked rapidly for the door before I could say anything else. I sent up a prayer to Celestia for her and focused on saving the others. I looked over the second pony, who hadn't said a word, and recoiled as I saw the blood caking the sides of her flanks. What had these raiders done? Looking around, I took in the beautiful shape of the room, trying to blot out the horrors everywhere I turned. Above the front door was an aged fresco of a beautiful white winged unicorn. Celestia? Usually large and graceful, a book floating in front of her. Her wings outstretched over a rainbow of foals as they smiled up and listened to story time. Not only had the ponies been painting over the images with blood and knives and violence, the fresco had been used for target practice, firing everything from bullets to flung excrement, and was now shattered and stained unspeakably. The room was oddly shaped, with balconies and rooms branching, literally, off in all directions. I could hear the voices of raider ponies in the other room, and judging from the decor, knives wouldn't be far behind. I'll be right back, I promise, I said with a whisper. Then, levitating the combat shotgun, I moved towards the nearest interior door. I jumped back as the door swung open at me. A raider pony stepped through and stopped, staring at me blankly. His coat was dark, black, under his makeshift armor. His mane wild. Holsters were strapped to his flanks, one with a small gun, the other holding a blade, whose edge was jagged like a saw, ensuring their most grievous wound. In stark, horrified disbelief, I saw that his cutie mark was actually a splayed torso. The raider pony recovered quickly, swinging his head around and drawing out the small gun in his teeth. What was he going to pull the trigger with his tongue? Just before Sats helped me pump my two shotgun rounds into his face. I felt no remorse as his head turned into spaghetti. It splattered over his instantly lifeless body. I hadn't just killed a pony. These raiders had given up any right to that title. They were not ponies, they were sick monsters that needed to be put down, and Celestia helped me if I wasn't going to do just that. I didn't realize it until that moment, but I was mad. The pure evil of this place had shaken me to the core, and my core was furious. Collecting knife and gun, I dropped the empty combat shotgun to the side. The smaller weapon was not going to be as powerful, but it was fully loaded. Six shots in the revolving barrel. And that was good, because there was no way the noise wasn't going to bring every raider pony running. The first three raider ponies galloped into the main library almost immediately, one of them crying out a thrill of insults. Sats helped me fire three shots at her head. The first two missed, but the third one finally found home in one of her ugly red eyes, and down she went. The second started firing a small firearm at me. What do you know? They do shoot with their tongues. Bullets impacted the doorframe, and one shot punctured one of my saddlebags, but didn't pierce flesh. I crouched and poked my head around, levitating the revolver in the doorway. I fired two shots at the second pony, but my Pitbuck's targeting spell was refreshing, and without it, I might as well have been aiming at the ceiling. Still, the gunslinger's pony skittered away, using one of the captive's ponies for cover. The dishonorableness 
poured gasoline on the fire of my anger. I stepped fully into the doorway, looking for the third, and spotting him at the far end of the main room. The third raider pony lowered his head, a pool cue clenched in his teeth, and charged at me. I blinked. Really? I took a step back, and the pony rushed at me, full tilt, which, and was nearly on me, when the ends of the pool cue struck the doorway, snapping him to a stop. I fired the last revolver shot, point blank into his neck. Even I didn't need sats at this range. Shouldn't you ponies be smarter than that? You live in a library! As the body slumped to the floor, bleeding from the gaping wound through his neck, I saw the gun-wielding raider standing in the open, aiming through the door. I dived to the side as shots rang out, and screamed as I fell into a, felt a bullet sink into my side. It hurt more than I thought it would. I fell against the wall, leaving a bloody smear as I collapsed next to the doorway. Pain seared my side, flaring with each breath. I could hear the clop of the raider's hooves as he approached cautiously. I tried to focus my magic to close the door, but the body of the pool cue pony was in the way. I cast about the room. It was a kitchen, and on a table, surrounded by knives, was the body of a fearsome creature of scales and teeth. The raider pony with the splayed torso cutie mark had been carving it up to cook. A refrigerator, an oven, and there were scattered books, but all ancient, destroyed, and unreadable. I was beginning to doubt the watcher's assertion that there was a book here like he described. Then, my eyes fell on what I was hoping for. In one corner, mounted on a wall, over several metal boxes of ammunition was a yellow box with a pink butterfly symbol on it. A medical box. Double luck. The box looked to be locked. There were knife scrapes all over it where the raiders had attempted to get it open. It should still have a few medical things inside and even a healing potion. But I had to survive the raider pony first, and I was wounded and out of bullets. Crossing to the ammo boxes would be moving across the open doorway. Scooting back, I looked around again, and focused my magic through the pain. When the raider pony stepped in, he was met by a swarm of knives flying in his face. Gah! He turned and fled back. The knives all either missed or struck uselessly against his armor. I was even more pathetic with melee weapons than I was with guns, but I got him out of the way long enough for me to make for the ammo boxes. And luck was with me again. While one box had ammo in it for large clips, or a type of gun that I have yet to see, the other had bullets designed for the revolver. The raider poked his head around again, calling out. You're all out of knives, missy. Why don't you just come on out? I promise I'll let you die. Eventually. His head turned in my direction, and his eyes went wide. I don't know if it was the look in his eyes or the revolver, but Sats was with me again, and this bastard wasn't going to get another chance to use a raped and beaten captive as a shield. One more dead raider pony. A picked medical box and healing potion later, I trotted quietly back to the main room, serrated knife floating by my side. I moved to the open cage and sawed away the ropes binding the poor pony. Go. You're free. Get somewhere safe. With a blink, I remembered the sniper pony and quickly told her which direction to sneak away in. She nodded mutely and began to slink out. I moved on to the next cage. What I saw 
sickened me. A pony had been locked inside, along with a decaying corpse. The pony was whimpering in her sleep. I had her tail wrapped around the ghastly body of a Teddy Ursa. Like. Unlike the other bodies, I couldn't tell how this one had died, for it wasn't carved apart. The body has lost all of its coat, its skin, it was a sickened blotch work of red and gray, flaking away. Its eyes were open, dry, and staring in wrong directions. Its teeth were horribly yellow, matched by the few strands of hair left in its mane and tail. Odd fleshy growths hung from its sides. At first, I mistook them for mutations, but then I realized that they were the, pegas the pony's wings. This was the body of a pegasus pony, stripped of feathers and hair. The wings looked strange, even repulsive. I screamed, a full-throated cry of terror, when the corpse shifted position and sat up, its eyes sliding around until they both focused on me. It was a zombie pony. The zombie pony looked at me, then tried to get up, only to fall over its one-winged side as its hooves were bound in ropes like the others. It, she, stared at me plaintively. My mind was telling me to kill it. Of the scattering half-thoughts that filled through my brain, untie the nice zombie so she doesn't get mad at me, managed to be the most coherent, if not the most sane. Swallowing, I moved the knife down, took out her ropes. I looked into her eyes, and was quickly forced to look away. One of them was sliding again. Her breath was fetid. Now, if you just go, and you... Now, if I let you go and you try to eat my brains, we're going to have some harsh words. God damn it. I had freed the second two captives. I freed the second two captives, including the zombie pony, both of whom slipped away without an offer of to help, although the zombie at least smiled at me, which was deeply unpleasant. I was trying to figure out a way to get the hanging cage when two more raider ponies appeared on a balcony above. One of them was a unicorn pony with a very scary looking firearm. I dove into the shelter of the stairwell as the raider opened fire. The gun let out a terrifying catastrophe of rapid fire cracks as it sprayed the room with bullets. At least I knew what type of gun those large clips were for now. I waited until I heard him reloading, and then dashed into the room, and spun to face him. Focusing on my magic, not on my own weapon, nor on him, but on the bookshelf behind him. And the glow of my horn stood out brighter and brighter as he lifted and then reloaded the assault rifle and took aim for my head. Crash! The bookcase came down on top of him, knocking him unconscious. The assault rifle fell to the floor in a rain of dead books, and something else showered down as well, thrown from the falling bookshelves. Knocking away a book, it had fallen over. I saw it was an ancient, dusty pair of pre-war binoculars. At first it struck me as an extremely odd that someone would need binoculars in a library. That would require some really bad eyesight. But the silly thought passed. I could see where the other raided pony had gone to, and swiftly <clears throat> I added the assault rifle to my growing collection and the binoculars, just for good measure. And then I looked back at the balcony, considering it was a long way to get to the caged pony hanging from the ceiling. If I could get up there, I thought, I could leap from it to the cage. And that would get me close enough that I could see what I was doing while I picked the lock. The second raider pony appeared, back at the railing, a wicked grin on his face. Then he shoved forward an ammo box, and then tilted it over. 
The lid sprung open, and half a dozen orange discs poured out into the library below. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, fuck. I dashed as fast as my little legs could take me, leaping over the body of Pulkew Pony and under the kitchen table, using my magic to toss over it as a shield. The carved up rat, rat gator slid to the floor with a meaty thump. Behind my shield, the world became blinding, light, and fire. When I emerged, the main room was wrecked, fresh blood dripping down onto my mane. Looking up, I saw the blast torn remains of the pony in his twisted metal cage. Oh, Celestia, damn them to hell. More determined than ever, I stripped the raiders' bodies, or what was left of them now, for their armors. The armors were in shredded tatters, but with some efforts, I was able to use the best parts of each of them and patch them together, to something that would give me better protection than my stable-issued utility barding. The resulting outfit had almost no pockets, so I would have to dig the utility suit out of my saddlebags to get most of my tools. But it was a fair trade. Putting it on was gruesome, and my hooves were darkened from blood just from working on it. Every inch was covered in the flash-fried gore of dead ponies. I almost lost my nerve and abandoned the awful thing. I slipped it on, and my stomach rebelled, but I didn't have any more to throw up. A last look around while I figured I still had the time. The raider above me obviously assumed I was dead. I would have been, assuming I was dead too. Looting the bodies garnered me a little more ammo. The gun from earlier, the earlier raider, which had been in bad shape to begin with, was damaged beyond repair by the explosion. And several ponies apparently collected body caps. Bottle caps! Which struck me as an absurd thing to hoard. I left those alone. The kitchen refrigerator had a small stockpile of food. Cooked radgator meat. A few skewers of barbecued fruits. And what the pit buck identified as bloat sprite meat. A pre... A box of pre-war cake. Because nothing says healthy eating like 200 year old food. And some water that looked like it was bottled straight out of the sludge river. I took everything but the cake and water. Apparently, splayed torso cutie grater was a rather decent cook. On second thought, I looked over the ingredients in the cake box. Filled with enough preservatives that your stomach will still be intact long after the rest of you has rotted to dust. And I took it too. The raider pony was in the main room, looking over his handiwork, when I returned from the kitchen. One look at me, at my growing pile of weaponry, and he fled up the stairs. I galloped after him, revolver zipping through the air in a cloud of levitation magic that matched the light around my horn. He went through the door on the level above, and it took me only a moment to reach it, but caution made me skid to a stop before barreling through. I thought that if it had been me on the other side, I'd be waiting on the other side of the door, ready to take the head off of the raider who rushed through. With positions reversed, I wasn't going to make the same mistake. A filly's cry from inside. Ah! Help! Changed the scenario. Standing to the side, I threw open the door. When there was no attack, I darted in and stopped short. The room was lined with more destroyed books on either side and ended in a large window that opened into a balcony. This room was decorated as disgustingly as the last, but filled with stained sleeping mattresses. Near the open window, a filly, too young to even have her cutie mark, lay on a mattress stained with so much blood it was nearly black. She had been brutalized and raped repeatedly and her flank was covered in small burns where her cutie mark would have eventually appeared. Her ropes were on the floor nearby, looking chewed through, and between myself and her, 
the raider pony stood with a shocking hostage. The zombie pony. It took me a moment to realize she must have flown in from the balcony. And, if I was allowed to believe there was any decency left in the world, it would have been her who gnawed the filly's ropes free. Now, she was against a wall, with the blade of an axe to her throat. A small part of my brain insisted on distracting me by wondering how the zombie pony could have flown when her wings didn't have any feathers, as if that was slightly more of a mystery than how she could still be alive, by some definition, in her decayed physical condition. My distraction was distracted by a nearby table, an ashtray with a smoking cigar, told me just how the filly had gotten those burns. Rage welled up inside of me, until I felt it would burst through my eyeballs. Next to the ashtray, two familiar metal apples rested on top of it, and the only slightly stained book with a stylized pony skull on the cover. A second look, a second book, this one, showing a revolver almost identical to the one floating next to me, had slipped to the floor, where it rested against one leg on the table, along with several pencils and a filly's lunchbox. A smiling, gentle white unicorn with a beautiful lavender and pink mane stared back from beneath the Stable Tech logo. It felt wrong that something so innocent should be in this place. My eyes turned to the Earth Pony Raider, with the axe in his teeth. For a moment, I just hated at him. The room, quiet, except for the filly's occasional whimpers. When my voice returned, my words surprised me. By Celestia, you're stupid. Hard to tell a pony to back off, or surrender, when your mouth is full of axe, isn't it? Maybe if you spent some more time reading those books, rather than destroying them, you'd be smart enough to come up with a plan that actually allow you to negotiate a way out of this. The grenades levitated off the table, and I dangled them between us. One that doesn't end with me shoving one of these up your tail hole. The raider pressed the blade tighter against the zombie pony's throat, enough to cut her flesh, which split and back pulled back as if it had been uh, strained taut. It might have once been blood oozing from the wound. The zombie pony didn't flinch or whimper, but the filly did both. Right. Kill her. The revolver floated next to the grenades. That way, there won't be anything to block my shots. I could see the raider considering his options and not killing what he was finding, not liking what he was finding. Dropping the axe from his mouth, he whined pathetically, I don't want to die, and dashed for the open balcony, leaping over the cringing filly. Sats sent four shots right into his ass. It was a pathetic way to die. Looking to the filly and the zombie pony, I smiled grimly. There's one left. I'll be right back. I turned and continued up the stairs, towards the upper balcony and the sniper pony. Better equipped and a lot more confident, my heart still flickered with righteous fire. In my way, I made my way carefully out of Ponyville. Up ahead, I spotted a huge gazebo surrounding a marble statue of a rearing pony girded with combat barding. A sword in his mouth. The gazebo was relatively free of graffiti and peeked through the binoculars. I could see why. A field of weeds around it were teeming with rad gators. My EFS was telling me it was filled with red marks as I drew closer. Sipping out of my newly Slipping out my newly acquired sniper rifle, I picked off a few. Their meat, I knew now, was safe when cooked. At least, 
relative to every other food source in the equestrian racelands. Slipping the sniper rifle back into its harness, another gift from the sniper pony, I slid out the serrated knife and crouched up towards my kill. An alert flashed on my pit buck. Checking it, I discovered it had been labeled the gazebo in front of me. The Macintosh War Memorial. Curiosity pulled me closer. Careful of rad gators, I needed enough to read the inscription beneath the statue through my binoculars. In honor of Big Macintosh, the hero of the Battle of Shattered Hoof Ridge, and his noble sacrifice for all of Equestria. As I lowered the binoculars, I caught sight of something else. A concrete circle sticking up from the ground, roughly halfway between myself and the gazebo, with a pony hole cover. Remembering the night before, I turned my pit buck back to the first radio station broadcast on the list. From those damned apple trees up near the stable, now he's terribly sick, too sick to move, or hold up in the cistern near the mator memorial. We're running out of food and medical supplies. Please, if any pony hears this, help us. Message repeats. Pulling out the revolver and wary of rad gators, I crept towards the cistern opening. I was almost there, for one of the beasts charged at me, its huge maw opening to reveal rows and rows of sharp teeth. I fired twice into its mouth. Horrifyingly, that wasn't enough to kill it, but it did make the beast think twice. The sound, however, brought more of them down on me. Abandoning the revolver in fright, I used my magic to pull open the pony hole and dived in, sliding the cover behind me. In the wake of my anger, I was exhausted. In the aftermath of the library battle, my whole body ached from exertion. My nerves felt frayed from the constant adrenaline. Eating a bloat spider skewer, I looked over the small underground chamber once more before curling up on the upper bank of a pair of bunk beds built into the wall. I tried not to think of the cold skeleton on the bed below me. The skeleton of his father was by the door. A sip from my canteen took the edge off my thirst. It was almost empty. I had to conserve. I reflected now, when I had come back downstairs after dealing with the sniper pony. The zombie pony was already gone, and had taken the poor filly with her. I hoped it was someplace safe. I found it strange that the most decent pony I found in the wasteland was already sort of dead. I also noticed that the assault rifle pony was also gone. He had woken up and freed himself from the crushed bookshelf. That meant there was at least one more raider still in the wastes. But I wasn't the sort of pony to kill some pony while they slept. Not even a raider. I figured that if I slept here tonight, that would give the rad gators time to wander away from the exit. If I was lucky, I would even spot where I dropped the revolver. Until then, I would preoccupy myself with my two new books. Slipping them out of my saddlebags, I looked the first one over. The one with my lost revolver on the cover, guns and bullets. Very straightforward. I set it aside for now. The second book, a gray tome with a black skull painted on the cover, was the real prize. Opening to the first page, I began to read The Wasteland Survival Guide by Ditsy Doo. Footnote Level Up. New perk Bookworm. You pay much closer attention to the small details when reading. You gain 50% more points when reading books.